What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and we're back on the 999cc kids go-kart. So today we're going to be making some dimple dyed gusset pieces for the back of the chassis. We're also going to be mounting up the steering wheel. We're going to pull the swing arm off, get an engine riser made and be swapping out the stock carb on the 999cc with a Makuni. So uh, stay tuned and thank you for watching today's video. We'll see you in a minute. So you can check out the links in the video description for these new, oh, Doyle, these Doyle vices. This is the five inch, I believe. And that's the big daddy six inch. I love these vices. This one actually bolted directly to this fab table. If you have the standard table from Quantum, uh, you just have to drill out the vice holes just like one step to five eighths and then you can run five eighths bolts in it. But later we're gonna get the longer table bolts so we can quickly pull it off if we want to. But, so, this is full Harbor Freight build right here, baby. We got the Doyle vise and we got the hydraulic punch driver. And that's what we was doing was punching. So we had to drill, I don't know what size it was. We had to drill like a 15, 30 seconds hole in the sheet metal. And then we punched out a three quarter hole. Then we put a three quarter dimple die. You can find these dimple dies and hole punches that I was using in the links. Uh, they're from Swat Off-Road, Swat. Sounds like Soldier Boy came up with a uh, with a fab company, Swag Off Road. Any hoosies, we're done with this. That was a long process. I only showed you a few holes, but when you're doing the, it's not really technically made for these big, like eighth inch thick of steel. But I didn't want to use thin stuff because I'm lazy and I already have cheap metal, the width that I need to cut. So. So now we have to straighten up this freaking unicorn piece of steel that you see. This is what happens when you dimple dye so many holes so close together. Perfect radius though. So how I did the other one, because I made one of these right there before I showed you guys. First I'm going to clean off all my blaster Multimax. And I use Multimax to help lube the hole punch. Uh, to keep my bit sharp. It's about dull now from where I've used it so much on thick metal So how I did this was I took it and put it in this Doyle vise straighten it out And then I pre-bend it a little bit Okay, it's not gonna be perfect when it comes out here Don't you freaking say anything with your smart mouse <laughs> <laughs> Good gosh, man Look up on the wrong side of the bed but it gets it pretty darn nice though. So we keep on doing this. We're almost done. And then you can also do it one hole at a time, like skip one hole. But, uh, and then I'll show you the next step. This only takes a few, I mean, honestly, a few minutes to fix this. Okay. Now we got it pretty straight. So then what I did, what I done did was, so then I got a one and a quarter socket and that fits over the dimple die. And I'm gonna put it in the press and dimple die from this side. 
because it it kind of humps the steel and that'll straighten this piece out perfectly straight again and then we can clean it up get it welded on the go-kart this will look sick race car and i am going to switch this stuff over to pneumatic this is the bin pack um presses and i'll do like them they're not bolted down that's why they're a little wobbly You can see it's already super straight in that because it was still bent like this curvature. Now it's getting super straight. So I only got 76 of these to do. <laughs> so we'll see you at the, at the buggy in a couple of days. I do like the fact that the bin pack has a fast and a slow pump. So this is if you're bringing down it like a big gap and then the slow actually puts the camera on it. Harbor Freight does have a foot pedal that you can convert any press to air, and we will be getting that very soon. A few moments later. All right, so we just added this bar here on the chassis, and it lines up with this lower tube. We do got our dimple dies made. We just can't weld these in until we weld the tube right here, and I don't want to weld that with the engine in, so these will go in uh, very soon. But we also got some Defiant Metal gloves in. They sent us some gloves. We sent these on Instagram. We said, hey, we'd like to check out these gloves. And they are the nicest welding gloves I've ever done did have. They sent us some, this is a MIG style. And they sent us some TIG ones too, a couple different styles and colors. And I like them a lot. So make sure to check them out in the description below. They're on Instagram, Defiant Metal. Good job. So Lonnie's gonna clean that. We're gonna get the gas tank mounted. We're using this 150 style gas tank from Go Power Sports. This is two and a quarter gallons. Plenty enough fuel to get us one mile down the road with this 999 hog. And uh, so we just took some angle iron, did a 45 degree cut, notched it on the rear, and it'll be welded in. Then we'll brace it from this down to the roll cage, just so we got a super stiff gas tank mount. All right. So here's your measuring trait. That was good. Now, I know you might be thinking, hey Greg, your body's hot. I know. Uh, why did we mount it so high? We wanted to. So case closed on that. <laughs> but we did it just because our exhaust and everything, we just know it's out of the way here. Won't be no problem. I know people's like, you're gonna die. Flames will get your hair. But guess what? I ain't got no hair, so. When's the last time you even seen a goat catch on fire? Years, so. Come think of it though, that time the gas tank was pretty much <laughs> in this exact location. Oh. <laughs> We're better people now, okay? Are we? Do you use any better fuel lines? And oh yeah, this will be the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now what I do is I run the line like super attached to the chassis. We'll have a some sort of a firewall. We'll die for sure. We could do a fire. That's what people want to see us. We could do a fire suppression system. They got those little nozzles you put around and you run one tank. And if a fire happens, you got a court like a jet has and stuff, and race cars have them. So you pull it and it just smokes the whole engine. It'll put a fire out quick. Yeah. They have those, but you know. It'd be cool just to do anyways. Yeah, yeah just to have out the engine. <laughs> Uh, so that was the only place to mount this gas tank, honestly. We looked everywhere to fit. That engine decent. takes up a lot of room. Yeah, so we had to go this high in order not to mount it like in the nose of the go-kart and be pumping fuel, and I hate worrying about fuel pumps. This has a pulse pump built onto it. It'll also be assisted with gravity fed, so when we put the Makuni, we don't have to worry about a fuel pump, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. So gas tank mounted. Now going on to the steering wheel.
clean all the, the coating off that, but obviously it didn't work too well. But it did some spattering, which is unfortunate. She'll hold. Definitely not the way I wanted that to come out, but it still looks decent. Just had a coating on it that it did not like. So once that cools, we've got this Go Power Sports steering adapter. This normally has a disc that would bolt up to your steering wheel. I've turned it down to three quarter inch. It was a hair bit off. I think I had to take a hundred thousandths off of it. And then I turned it down to half inch so it sleeves real nice into the tube and then put a bevel so I can do a nice TIG weld. And if I go over, I can machine it off. And this will be our steering adapter. And we have this bearing flange that we just welded. We'll sleeve right over it and set right behind it. And we can mount this plate into the chassis and then brace it off. All right, so you guys see me welding up all this junk that I machined up. I uh, did this bearing sleeve that has two three quarter inch inside that diameter bearings. Then I took a Go Power Sport steering shaft and welded it together uh, to the hub for this quick release. So, and then I made these plates. It isn't fully welded, but so I'm gonna hold it exactly where I want it. Lonnie's gonna come in and tack it. Lonnie, go ahead and tack me here in there on the bottom. Woo okay. Yeah. That's some good steering. <laughs> That's a real good steering. I want to do a hammer, hammer tap. All right, we got steering. There we go. And it's super comfortable. You can turn it off. This is super comfortable though. Then we got a big e brake we're putting right here. So we got to make the plates for it. Put the e brake so we can. Where are we going to put the NOS? <laughs> NOS, right here. So yeah, we got that done. Now we can start pulling the back section off, welding everything that we can for now, and making an engine riser, unfortunately. All right, so this is the back setup. We have to, I want to pull the engine to weld in those dimple dyed pieces that we got to go right there. So I'm going to have Lonnie pull this swing arm and we put a two by four and a one by four or a piece of plywood under that to space it up about two inches. And we have plenty of clearance for the chain now. We don't have to worry about the engine. I may, just in case, make some type of a guard here, just in case the chain was thrown, it won't get into that but uh, that's gonna work. So now we can pull that, we can mount our brake caliper and make a engine riser, which sucks to have to do, but Lonnie's it is probably, it is. yeah, I don't wanna cut that engine plate off. That's for sure. That's a lot of weld. <laughs> and I'd be the one cutting it, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, so we're gonna do that and then I can weld out this roll cage and get the, I'm excited to see those dimple dies on there. Yes. They look good. I'm excited to ride this thing. I want to feel I'm that. I'm too. We got a lot of little things to do, but after when I get this engine off, we're mounting the battery, welding up everything. While we got that off, we're going to mount the brake. Brake, and then we can finish up steering, and then we're super close to riding. It. So let's get to it.
So this is the 999cc Duromax. We're going to pull off the air box and the factory carb. Probably go ahead and pull this uh, fan shroud off to see how the coils work. I'm hoping that the governor is inside the coils so we can run a Makuni on it but still have it governored. So we gotta pull this apart and see how these electronics work. First we're gonna start off with these twist locks that pull the air box cover off. Pull that off. Slide that air filter out. It looks like we have some eight mils around the side. So we have this electronics box back here that says ECU, engine control unit. So I'm gonna leave everything attached because I don't know what all this box controls. And I know people wanna see us put a drive-by-wire setup in it. It's more expensive to do that and more headache than just slapping on a Makuni and making more power at the end of the day. So now I'm gonna take off this snorkel. So this actually sandwiched on the air box and everything. So I'm not unplugging anything at the moment. I don't know where everything goes. So we had a barb that was pressed in that. It's a pretty cool piece though to keep. So now we have our carb gasket. Looks like a lot of the same size that a 670 like Predator or a 713 Duramax V twin would have on it. Like carburetor size. There we go. And we did turn this engine on its side to make a engine plate set up and got oil all over it. Fuel pump bracket. Okay. Now we can unplug the carb. So for people that didn't know, this little switch right here is electronically controlled and it's spitting a little nipple out that shuts off all the fuel. So when you turn the, the key off, electricity stops going to this and kicks that out, that little plunger that allows no more fuel to be driven to this carburetor. You can see this is electronically controlled carburetor and it's really not that big. So I would imagine we would get substantial horsepower gains with a Makuti on this. I'm just gonna lay this all connected to the ECU, lay it aside because this engine should run perfectly fine without the ECU on it. All we're doing is gonna remove all these electronics and see if it'll run. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. There's a ground right here. I'm gonna get rid of that. Then we have these harnesses passing under the intake here. And if something happens and we need to hook this all back up, we can. I don't see that being a problem. Pretty straightforward setup here. We got a barrel connector there. Okay, so we have this main harness wrapped around here. This is going to all the electric start stuff. So I'm gonna remove all of it. The only thing I'm gonna retain is the charging coil. And then I need to either make a new harness that's gonna to go to the kill switches, which is basically the kill switch of these coils. You're just, it's just like a predator. You're grounding them out to kill them. This harness can be pushed through there, out there. Okay, so the carb, we have the old carb ECU pulled off there. We will not need none of this. All right, so we have our voltage regulator that's down here. We have the output already going here. What is this other blue wire and where is it going? I have no clue. So we can reuse this whole kill switch wire here. So now we can take off this carb adapter. I mean, there is hardly nothing different from this than a normal V-twin. So this is gonna be the biggest horsepower gain is later making a custom intake with bigger ports, much bigger than this, and really make some power. We're gonna keep this whole gasket and isolator. There we go. So I want to pull a Makuni adapter off the shelf and see if it matches this bolt pattern. All right, here's the 
Performance 670 Makuni adapter. Let's see if it's going to line up. What do you know? Look at that. So all we have to do is cut the center out of this. We can do the same to that and later we can bevel that and we have a Makuni adapter. That is sick. So we don't have to do nothing to put a 34 mil Makuni on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all mounted up. We gotta make sure to block off this hole here so we won't have a leak. You can put a just block off screw in there uh, from the bottom or whatever and silicone around it. Uh, oh, they've actually welded that shut. So that is really nice that they've already welded this shut on the bottom side. That's huge. Predator 670s are straight through. You can have a vacuum leak there if you're not careful. So that is awesome. Okay, so we got it put back together. Uh, basically, I put this little shroud back on and I'm gonna buy some plastic caps to cap off. This is where the turn knob used to be. This is where the push button was. But I am going to leave the RPM gauge on the engine because that'll also, I think that'll keep hours as well. So we can keep up with that on the actual engine instead of like if we switch it on a different chassis, then we can lose track of how many hours we actually got on this hog. But when I had this all apart, I did port match uh, this to the intake. I port match the intake uh, to this intake to the head. So everything is super port matched and it took quite a bit of grinding. So, and I know people are gonna say that this 34 millimeter Makuni is not big enough. Well, this carburetor that came off this, and it, it looks like a freaking engine exploded here. Um, this thing's pretty small. So we're definitely gonna get a big gain in power from just the 34. Now we probably can go bigger than a 34, but we need to see what the intake valve size is. So if this, let's say this had a 30 millimeter intake valve size, you're just throwing out random numbers. 30 millimeter, then we wanna go with the 28 millimeter Makuni. That's what's gonna flow the best. That's what I always do. You can do something different if you like, but that's what I do. But uh, yeah, I think it looks sick because it's way thinner now. Airbox was about up here. Super compact and I like it. So now we have the swing arm pulled apart. I do have to weld up the shock tabs and the pan hard bar mount. We have the chassis all welded up. We gotta finish the steering and uh, put brakes on it. So we are very close. Sorry, I'm wearing glasses today. Might be weird, uh, but I ran out of contacts. But make sure to check out the links in the video's description for all the parts we use from Go Power Sports. They've supported this build from the start. And we're gonna show you how much fun you can have on a small kid's go-kart chassis by doing some light modifications to it. All this, other than the engine being two grand, everything's super affordable to make a buggy like this. It has really uh, crude suspension design and it's gonna be so fun because we only worked on it a week and then we're driving it. So uh, make sure to stay tuned. The next episode, we should be starting and driving this thing because uh, all we have left to do is finish up the steering, the brakes, little things, and we're gonna be driving this uh, engine. So next video is a huge video, probably gonna come next week. So stay tuned for that. I cannot wait to drive this uh, big V-twin and be making some power. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Duramax for sending us out this huge engine and thank you Go Power Sports for supporting this build. Uh, we love you guys and we thank you for supporting us. We love you guys as well and we'll see you on the next one. God bless.